follows the heroic Boy Scout in his many adventures to stop adversaries ranging from the common crook all the way to beings like Darkseid, parasites and killer androids, all the way to freaks of mutation but we'll get into them soon enough. The series first aired in 1996, a part of what would later become the DC Animated Universe. The animated series ran for three seasons, with a total of 54 episodes. Now, what can I say about this series? The cast? Well, brilliant, delivering the most memorable and iconic versions of these characters to date. The animation is fluent and sometimes bouncy, reminding me of the fluidity of the Fleischer Superman animations from the 40s. The music? My god, the music. Just, just listen to this. My goal is to try to be as objective as possible and remove myself from as much bias as I can. The show can't be some untouchable holy grail, and when I get to cover the Batman animated series, I'll be doing the same thing. However, that being said, when the show is at its best, the episodes are comparable to the best of the Batman animated series, Spectacular Spider-Man, or even Young Justice. As I just said, the best of Superman the animated series holds up to scrutiny. Most of my favourite episodes come in the form of multi-episode events, like The Last Son of Krypton, Apocalypse Now, Legacy, or World's Finest. These multi-part episodes feel like events, not just in the scale of the threat, but also the attention to detail in the episodes themselves. The animation, sound design, voice acting, everything feels more memorable and distinct in these episodes. Of course, they weren't my only favourites. I was refreshingly surprised with episodes that broke the mould, like The Late Mr. Kent, an episode that highlights Clark's detective ability, an episode that peers into the mind of Clark and how he's going to get out of such a situation, a situation that just keeps getting worse and worse as time goes on. I wanted this to be Clark's victory, not Superman's. Or even Nighttime, an episode that sees Clark impersonate Batman. How and why isn't important, but it was nice to see what Clark thinks Batman is like and impersonating that. Thanks, Commissioner. That was close. You're telling me. Of course, they're some of my favourites, but with the faves equally come the worst of the series. Now, even with the worst of this show, it's still better than what we're getting today. I'd say the worst of this series either falls into one of two categories, failing in the execution of the idea, like Superman's Pal or The Hand of Fate, or falling into a repetitive episode structure and just becoming monotonous or bland. That was the mould I was talking about earlier that the episode The Late Mr. Kent was able to break out of. By no means are these horrible episodes, they're just kind of forgettable. Superman's Pal being my least favourite, and Bruce Tim seems to agree. I think it's a good idea for a show, but... The execution is just not there, it's like, uh, I don't know. Looking at the show in its entirety, I'd say season 1 was strong, but formulaic, and in some cases it had to be, it had to establish the world and its characters before then shaking things up. Season 2 had some underwhelming episodes, but it had a lot of standouts. By the end of the season hitting their stride, knowing what kind of show this is and what did and didn't work. As for season 3, this is where they really pushed the envelope, giving us quality episodes that shocked and pushed our characters into new places, especially for Supes himself, meeting new allies that bounced off him in unexpected ways, Aquaman, Green Lantern, and even Kara by the end of the series. I don't believe it. A super girl? Believe it. I think there's this earnest, optimistic, and hopeful quality to Superman that feels timeless and charming, in a unique way. In fact, I've always tried to help people whenever possible. You sound too good to be true. He's saving people because he can. There isn't a call to action in the way that Batman or Spider-Man have with their loved ones dying. He's just good for the sake of being good, and this series captures that perfectly. All right, who wants to explain what you were doing up there? They dared me. We didn't think you'd do it. I know it's tough to turn down a dare, but sometimes being brave means using your head and not doing something dangerous just because other kids pressure you. You're right, Superman. I'll be smarter next time. Good or bad, he's always trying to save everyone, pointing out the error of their ways whilst he's at it, teaching us to be better. At the same time, his desire to help people is held against him. His rogues understand he values people's lives, and if the choice comes between catching the villain or saving life, you'll bet he'll choose the latter every time. Something that is quite obvious is its differences to the Batman animated series, and what the series does to differentiate itself. Conflicts happening during the day instead of night, the adversaries are more powerful and demanding of Superman's presence. Conquerors, metahumans, you get the picture. It's different to the more psychological adversaries Batman faced. That being said, the episodes that are more mental, the episodes that show us Clark's detective or reporting capabilities were my favourite, the late Mr. Kent being an obvious standout, as we see Clark solve a case for a man facing death row. 
You gotta believe me. You're my last hope. His heartbeat was steady. His eyes never wavered. I was beginning to wonder. Superman is given the all-star treatment here. After all, it is his show. Here we see the duality of Kal-El's personas. Superman and Clark Kent is equally interesting to watch. And what was more interesting is that one can't live without the other. But I am Clark. I need to be Clark. I'd go crazy if I had to be Superman all the time. Being Clark gives Cowl a life. It's why he slows down to sometimes be Clark. Slow poke to jog or to drive, even though there's no real reason for him to. And this extends to his work. As Clark, it allows him to stay close to the action as a reporter, hearing news first and dipping into his Superman getup. And as Superman, it's refreshing to see him face adversaries that target his weaknesses. He's not invulnerable, getting to face villains either matching him in strength, utilizing a red sun, kryptonite multiple times mind you, magic, or even getting the better of him by targeting civilians, playing on his desire to help people. I have to say, this is easily my favourite version of Lois. I think this and Smallville gave us a Lois that's believably not a pushover. You're getting sloppy, Smallville. This sentence is loaded with typos. Not only does she give it to Clark, but she also takes it as Clark gives it back to her from time to time. Parking validation. Now there's a page one headline. Kent. It's from LexCorp. It creates this competitive rivalry between the two that's fun to see, chasing stories and getting a lead on people she wants to interview, which often lands her in hot water. I think something that was nice to see is that she doesn't always count on being saved either, sometimes saving herself or saving others if Supes isn't around. One of my favorite characters in the series is Lex, Clancy Brown. Wow. Just... Just well, what can I say? Well, let's start off with what they did with him. Here, Lex has been portrayed to be less of a maniacal scientist and more of a cunning businessman. You work for me, Peterson. Don't forget that. There shouldn't be an opinion in your head that I haven't put there. He has this, I have everyone under my thumb feeling that's just really scary. Just the way he makes people disappear or the way he talks to his underlings. It's really quite powerful. Mercy will see you safely home now, won't you, my dear? Please, no. I, I, I mean, I can see myself home. Really? But I insist. Metropolis can be such a dangerous city, Peterson. I'd hate to wake up tomorrow and find out that something terrible had happened. <laughs> Sure, whilst he's fleshed out more as a character in Justice League Unlimited, he's certainly still interesting here. I think the conflict between him and Superman is one of the best in comics. Two philosophies at odds with each other, two men that value very different things, one being Metropolis' saviour and one wanting to be Metropolis' saviour. This brings us to Turpin, a cop with no time for fun. Turpin starts out with no patience for Superman or respect for the good he does. However, after saving each other a couple of times, the two start to form a bond. If it wasn't for Dan Turpin, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. Thanks. Anytime, pal. Sure, Turpin falls into obscurity throughout Season 2, but it's when Darkseid arrives on Earth does Turpin show his true colours, facing off against parademons and standing up against Darkseid in this Italian-American kind of way that's just iconic. To kill off and keep the character dead was an incredibly brave move by the creators. It gave a sense of weight to the arc, a sense of consequence that would have felt lost if Darkseid had begun an invasion and just left without our heroes losing something that was important to them. In this case, Turpin becoming the perfect fall man. Death wasn't something the show shied away from, as Mannheim is killed too, though it's never as in your face as Turpin's death. That being said, the show was designed for child audiences, meaning as creepy as Toy Man may be, or as scary as Darkseid is in the show, they never wallow in self-seriousness. Finding time for the light, the optimism, which is synonymous to the character of Superman in and of itself. Okay, I'm editing this now, and I totally forgot my favourite scene in the entire series. This lady. Just, just watch this. Just this lady. Here on Earth, marriage isn't something you can command. Marriage is a willing partnership where husbands and wives share the decisions and sacrifices. What planet is he from? Speaking of villains, well, where do I start? I dug the villains the show created, similar to what they did with the creation of Harley in the Batman animated series, Luminous, Volcano, and Livewire being the show's creations. Now, Luminous to me felt like a budget Mirror Master, although with a lot more interesting backstory. That's just it. You never did anything for me. And I risked it all. My job, my reputation, my research. I knew what would happen if Lex found out. 
As for Livewire, she was my least favourite, being the physical embodiment of every righteous 17 year old activist type that we see today. More concerned with making noise than making a point. Do you really believe that garbage you say about Superman, or is it just a way to get ratings? Look, baby, to make it in this town, I had to be better, sharper, and louder than any man to get half as much notice. And nothing was handed to me on a silver platter either, unlike your friend Superman. It's some attitude you have there. Ah, pays the bills. As for Volcano, she was a refreshing villain, being quite sympathetic by the end. The plotting of her episode being too intense to break down here, but seeing her get a reasonably happy ending was nice to see. Of course, we have to mention the classics, Metallo, Parasite, Bizarro, Mitzius Pitlick, who are all recurring villains in the series. But to me, the standouts were Brainiac, Darkseid, and Toyman. Toyman actually having a really great backstory and told excellently as well, as Clark and Lois find out simultaneously. As for Darkseid, what needs to be said? He's Darkseid. I think Darkseid side works best less as a character and more of a means to an end. We know the final conflict will end up here. What matters is the journey we take to get there, and for Superman that's facing every one of his underlings under the sun. From the female Furies and Granny Goodness, Kalabak, even Stefan Wolf, all before getting to the main course himself. You dare strike me! I love that Darkseid didn't go out like a bitch either. He was always one step ahead, and when he did get beat, he made the victorious punish for it. Savor your moment of triumph, Superman. But remember, victory has its price. As for Brainiac, I think it's a stroke of genius making him the AI for Krypton. Some could argue it shrinks the universe by doing this, but I'd say it only makes the battle between Superman and Brainiac all the more personal, as Brainiac has first-hand experience with Jor-El. You are your father's son, Kal-El. Headstrong, foolish, easily defeated, and ultimately forgotten. Now, I forgot to mention Mala and Jackson, who are pretty much like Zod and Ursula here. I think they provided a great lens to see what Superman could have become if he wasn't instilled with the values of his parents. His real parents. The Kents. Their totalitarian regime on the planet being Superman's worst nightmare come to life. In a way, kind of reminding me of Barrel and Lilo from All-Star Superman. Like I mentioned before, the series had many cameos. Batman, Flash, Green Lantern, Doctor Fate, Aquaman, and Steel. I didn't really expect much from these episodes, and sure, some are better than others, but it was still nice to see the universe slowly get built out in this way, especially since they'd return in Justice League. Before I wrap this up, I just want to touch on the action. Seriously, they went above and beyond here, finding new ways to create stakes and problems for Superman to solve. You think he's fixed the situation, but it just gets a whole lot worse, which only makes it more exhilarating to watch. <laughs> too, as a show with superpowers can get boring very quickly when it's just people punching each other. So villains like Luminous and Toyman were welcomed in that way. Overall, Superman the Animated Series is a really tight show. Some episodes are more forgettable than others, but consistently the show supplies great writing, fun action, gorgeous music, well-developed characters, and a sincerity that just makes you want to keep watching. Now, I'm going to be going through all the DC animated shows, but I'll be breaking it up with other shows as well. If you're interested in that, then maybe stick around by hitting the subscribe button. I really love the character of Superman, so with that being said, I will leave you with some more Superman videos here. Ciao.